Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're a new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. Hi folks, let's look at another compatibility equation problem. So this time we've got two bars, each made out of different material. So in the diagram below, we've got one material fabricated from steel, another material fabricated from brass. And these materials have been connected in series and placed between two walls when the initial temperature is at 10 degrees C. So the problem tasks us to calculate the force exerted on the rigid supports when the temperature increases from 10 degrees C to 20 degrees C. So in the diagram below, we've got the following information. So we've been given the Young's modulus for steel to be at 200 GPA. The cross-sectional area is given as 200 millimeters squared. And we've also been given some information in terms of the thermal property of the material. So the linear coefficient of expansion has been given at 12 times 10 to the power minus 6 per centigrade. For the brass, we've been given the Young's modulus to be 100 GPA. The cross-sectional area is slightly higher or larger than that of the steel at 450 millimeters squared. And we've also been given the linear coefficient of thermal expansion to be at 21 micro per centigrade. So how do we go about solving this particular problem? And the expected answer of this problem should yield a result of 6.99 kilo newton. So I've provided further diagrams to characterize the problem that we need to solve. So from, I think, chapter five, when we talked about thermal um, loads or thermal stresses, we did state that when materials either increase in temperature or decrease in temperature, there is some measure of deformation experience in the material. So in this instance, we have a thermal expansion due to the increase in temperature. Thus, the brass and the steel will be extended linearly. As a result, there is that possibility of that measure of extension eaten or breaking or penetrating to the wall. Thus, we need to calculate what is that measure of reaction that will keep the material in series in equilibrium to ensure that at the point of entry against the wall, that measure of equilibrium prevents further extension of the material into the wall. So that's what we've characterized as RA. So how do we go about calculating this particular problem? So let's have a go working through this problem. So this is the visual representation of the problem that we need to solve. So let's look at the properties given relating to the brass segment. So the cross-sectional area is already given in the problem to be 450 millimeters squared. Alpha, I believe that was given to be 10 times 10 to the power minus 6 per centigrade. And the Young's modulus, so let's call that EB, that was given to be 100 GPA. So if you're going to calculate in the base of millimeters, then you can rewrite this to be 100 kilo newton per millimeter squared. Regarding steel, the cross-sectional area, so let's call that AF, that was given to be 200 millimeters squared. Alpha S is given to be 12 times 10 to the power minus 6 per centigrade. And E given, yes, given as 200 GPA. So on the basis of millimeters, we can rewrite that to be 200 kilo 
you said, per millimeter squared. So that's the information I've been provided. Ah, I think I'm being there ahead. That's actually 21. 21 minus 6 per centigrade. So I guess it's got all this major. So if we assume it, okay, from the question, that the temperature increase is the same. So we've been given the initial temperature. So let's call that T I, or T1. You can call it theta one if you want to, so that doesn't really matter. So that is equal to 10 degrees C. So that's the initial temperature of the composite. And then that's been heated too, so let's call that the final temperature of T2, so that is 20 degrees C. So therefore, the change in temperature, so we can call that delta theta or delta T, to be equal to T2 minus T1, so this would be equal to 20 minus 10 degrees C, and that's equal to 10 degrees C. Okay, so I think we have all the needed information to calculate the expansion in each material. So let's look at the extension in breadth. So the extension. So we're going to be using the thermal expansion formula. So theta, so let's call that theta i. So the expansion that in the instance will be equal to alpha i times delta theta i times L i. Okay. So that is equal to the coefficient of Linear expansion. Then we've already done delta theta, so that is the temperature change. And L subscript I is the original length. In our case, the length per section. Okay. So delta V. So this is representing the extension in the brass that'll be equal to alpha B times delta theta times L B. Okay, and the problem gave L B to be 300, right? Where L B is equal to 300 millimeters. So therefore, the extension. And brass, that's delta B, B equal to 21 minus 10 to the power minus 6 times the change in temperature, which is 10, times 300. Okay, now that would be in millimeters. So we'll bring our tractor calculator. So 21. Minus 10 to the power minus 6 times 10 times 300. And that gives 0 0.063 millimeters. So we'll do likewise for steel. So using the same formula. So the extension in steel. Or in the steel section, let's call that delta S. That'll be equal to alpha S times delta theta or delta T if you want times L S. Okay, and L S also giving us three hundred meters in a given problem. So putting known values into the equation, we have. 
12 times 10 to the power minus 6 times, into bracket, 10 times 300. And the final unit would be in millimeters. So we bring our trusted calculator. 12 times 10 to the power minus 6 times 10 times 300. And that gives 0 0.036 millimeters. So therefore, the total extension of bar, or the composite bar, so let's call that delta T, will be equal to delta S plus delta B. This will be equal to 0 0.036 plus 0 0.063. And I'll be equal to 0 0.099 millimeters. So we've now calculated the extension and the bar due to thermal changes. So we're now going to look at the reaction or the counter reaction from the wall to ensure that during the thermal increase, okay, or the change in temperature on the composite, we don't have any protrusion of the composite bar into the wall. So to show that there's equilibrium at the interface of the support at the wall, then we need to have some form of equivalent reaction which will have or generate an equivalent extension to negate that due to the thermal loads. Okay. So let's um R W be equal to Reaction from the wall. Okay, so we know from um, I think is it chapter eight? I believe yeah, I think it's chapter eight or chapter seven where we talked about um, axial deflection. So axial deflection. So let's call that. Delta I will be equal to the product of the internal force times the original length, or divided by the product of the cross sectional area per segment times the corresponding Young's modulus. So we're going to be using this equation. So, for the purposes of equilibrium, we are assuming that. The reaction in the wall will be equal to the internal reaction in the steel composite, or the sorry, the steel section of the composite bar, which will also be equal to the internal force within um, the brass section of the composite. So this is the equ equational state that we are going to assume. Okay, then we're going to calculate the extension or the total extension experience in the bar, and that will be the extension experience in segment one for steel and segment two, which characterizes brass. Okay, so delta T will be equal to, let's do this, N S times LS divided by AS times ES plus into bracket ND times LD over AB times EB. So since we've already defined that NB but the internal force in the brass would be equal to the internal force in the steel, which would be equal to the reaction from the wall. We can replace NS and NB by RW. So we can redefine this equation as the total extension, delta T, 
will be equal to RW LS for AS ES plus RW LB for AB EB. Okay, let's call that. Let's call that I. So since we've got common terms, okay, in both variables in the bracket, then what we can do is we can factorize R dot U out of the expression. So the total extension will be equal to R dot U into bracket L over A E. I'm just going to call that subscript S plus the ratio of L to A E with respect to B. Okay. So since we are interested in R W, if we make R W, so I'll make it R W. Subjects of this relationship, then the reaction from wall RW will be equal to delta C times into brackets. L divided by A E. So that has a big bracket there. Respect to S plus the ratio of L to A E respect to B. The inverse of that. Or C divided by the sum of the ratio of the lens to the area and Young's modulus of the two specimens or the two segments of the bar. Okay, so let's work through this part of the equation first. Okay, so L of A E respect to S is equal to 300 divided by 200 times 200 times 10 to the power of 3. If we bring our handy calculator, we yeah, have 300 divided by 200 times 200 to the power of 3. Bracket close. And that gives 7.5 times 10 to the power minus x. So we've got that. Then for, so this is for steel. For brass, L is a, a, brass is equal to 300 divided by 450 times 100 times 10 to the power of 3. If we bring our handy calculator, that'll be 300 bracket 450 times 100 times 10 to the power of 3. So as a reminder, I'm working things out in the basis of millimeters. So if you're working out in the basis of meters, it's very important that you keep all bases in meters. Okay, don't mix millimeters and meters, otherwise you will make an error. Okay, so this is 6.6667 times 10 to the power minus 6. Okay, so if we add the 2, then this part of the equation, so therefore, sigma, so let's call the sigma L over AE, I will be equal to 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6. 
six point six 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 seven times ten to the power of minus six, and that she equate to seven point five times ten six plus six point six six seven. 10 minus 6, and that gives 1.416, I call that 7, times 10 to the power minus 5. All right, so we're almost done. So previously we calculated that the total extension Delta T is equal to 0 0.099 millimeters. So therefore, RW is equal to 0 0.099 or divided by 1.4167 times 10 to the power minus 5. Okay? Or it could be Alternatively, this is the same as 0 0.099 times 1.4167 times 10 to the power of 5. So just relating that to what we know relating to indices. Okay. Either way, you should get the same answer. So the inverse of that times 0 0.99. Oh, sorry. 0, 0.99, and that gives 6,988.22 newtons, which is the same as 6.99 kilo newtons. Okay, and there we have it.